Hello, everybody. We have a packed house here. I, uh, we had no idea what to expect. <laughs> um, welcome to the third annual Polymer Summit. Woo! Uh, I am Matthew McNulty. I'm the engineering director for Polymer and Chrome DevTools and Lighthouse and a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, so welcome to the third summit. This is going to be our biggest summit ever. Uh, as you can tell, it's our biggest venue ever. Um, so we have sort of more of everything. We have more code lab space. We have more space to talk to, to uh, Polymer team members. We have more space to get food. Um, we're actually really, really responsive to all the comments that people leave every single year. So the biggest number one comment from last year, I don't know if anyone recalls, uh, is wider chairs. <laughs> so. Unfortunately, fire code says we have to strap them together, so we tried to skirt that and didn't really weren't really successful about that. <laughs> but it should be a little bit more room for everyone else. Um, so we have two full days, 24 talks. So just a few quick notes to get out of the way, and then we'll get started. Uh, so bathrooms are on the wall behind you. Uh, there are additional unisex bathrooms by the front entrance where you came in, um, and then just in case, we actually brought more bathrooms in out in the courtyard as well. Um, that was the second most commented thing last year. <laughs> uh, so meals and breaks will take place directly across the hall. Uh, there's a mother's room and prayer room in the back corner next to the restrooms. Um, and, but most important of all is our code of conduct. So it's incredibly important for us that this is an inclusive community and event. And in order to, do, in order to really get that across, we decided to make a neat video about it this year. So check it out. We want everyone to have the best experience possible at this year's Polymer Summit. This is an inclusive community. No matter your experience or background, you're welcome here. We encourage you to be excellent to each other by saying hi to new faces, building on one another's ideas, and reporting any uncomfortable experiences. We have a zero tolerance policy for harassment of any kind. This policy is posted on large signs around the venue and our full community guidelines are on the event website. Please share your positive and constructive feedback with staff and speakers. Staff and speakers can be identified by their staff or speaker badges or shirts. Let's make this the best developer event ever by creating an excellent experience at this year's Polymer Summit. Thanks. All right, so let's get this party started. I'd like to welcome onto the stage Wendy Ginsberg, Product Manager for Polymer. Good morning. Hey everyone, I'm Wendy. I'm a Product Manager on the Polymer Project at Google. I'd like to welcome all of you to the third annual Polymer Summit. We're absolutely stoked to be here in Copenhagen for a couple of days celebrating the web platform. It's always awesome to see so many different people at these events from all over the world, representing all kinds of different companies with all different roles, skills, and passions. And this year is no different. Folks have come from far and wide, representing almost 100 different countries. There are people from industry, open source contributors, weekend warriors, and even people who are brand new to web components and Polymer, many of whom we met this morning at the Code Lab. But no matter who you are, where you're from, if you're here in the audience at one of the numerous GDG
and get back a, a 302 that actually redirects them to the latest 1.x release, which, as it is a tagged and unchanging artifact, is sent back with a very aggressive caching policy. So as you can see, our special needs have come to fruition thanks to Web Components and Polymer. Now, I'd like to uh, briefly cover a few more wins and show off some of our sites. So as mentioned, we have 75 components in production. Uh, they're now powering about 30 sites in total. And that number is growing rapidly every day. On the left is uh, e.com corporate site using the out-of-the-box default theme. And on the right is the more heavily styled Titanfall 2 site, uh, but both using the same NDS version and the same HTML import. Uh, and here are a couple more uh, with Mass Effect on the left and on the right, uh, an upcoming new franchise from BioWare, Anthem. And we have gone from a previous tedious and lengthy process to bring up a site to now only taking about one and a half weeks of content only. Uh, that means no development effort. So component type thinking is really just how we operate across all functions now. We don't design and build pages anymore. We are always looking to decompose and then compose with component-based building blocks. And as a bonus, to the delight of our digital intelligence team, we have been very consistent uh, and complete analytics tracking across all of our components, allowing us to compare apples to apples between different sites. And of course, Efficiency and economy of scale, we've reduced duplication, we have better engineering mobility between projects and teams. And with a predictable, proven, and streamlined system, we have much, much lower project risk and a far more dependable schedule. So going back to this original goal of living in a world of making our commodity web turnkey, low effort and maintainable, how have we done? I would say a resounding success thanks to Web Components and Polymer. Thank you very much. All right, it is time for our first break. We're running a little bit late, which is Polymer Summit tradition. Uh, so there is coffee and tea and light snacks available over in the catering area, and we'll start up again at 11.35.
I got some music to play me on this time. All right, so our next two talks before lunch are actually the two core engineers of Polymer. That's Steve Orvell and Kevin Schaff. Uh, they do everything together, so they're even sharing the same talk, talk block. Uh, Monica likes to call them Steven. Uh, so up first, we've got Steven Orvell. Uh, he's the one who always complains that our elements are not fast enough, not good enough. Uh, so we put him in charge of it, and now he's here to talk about it. Purple server node here. Uh, give us feedback. So this is kind of set up for you to de deploy onto a hosting site like a App Engine, uh, so something like that. Sit behind a CDN and, and get really good serving efficiency. OK, so with Purple node server, uh, we kind of fill in the last big gap in our story about how we're actually going to deliver these awesome experiences using the platform. And hopefully you feel more confident now that you have all the tools you need to build robust real-world apps like this real estate app, right? And at the beginning, I said I, we had like two weeks, right? That was our setup. We had two weeks to build this. Um, so to be honest, I didn't have a whole lot of time I, uh, to kind of put this talk together, but I really wanted to build an app. And I actually was able to build this out in two days, you know, this much. It's a proof of concept. I still need to do uh, a little more work to get the demo ready. Uh, but of that two days, like, a full half of it, like a whole day, was just generating a bunch of fake real estate JSON <laughs> so that I didn't get sued by people by showing their house in my, in my talk. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, from this proof of concept, I mean, I feel that I'm way more confident now that I've got a really well-factored UI with components that I can reuse across other applications. Um, I've got easy to debug state management that'll scale well to adding more routes, adding more features. Uh, I know I'm going to be set up well for performance. Um, I've, got a, I've got a structure that scales well for performance with the purple 50 pattern. Uh, and I've got a great serving environment with purple server node. So hopefully, you feel like you can be this productive with the web platform, too. So we're going to continue working to take all of these kind of best practices that we come across as we kind of tackle more and more um, challenges on the web platform and provide guidance and provide features and provide uh, products to help, help move this along. Thank you very much. All right, so it's lunchtime, but I just want to do a couple quick announcements first. So food will be over across the way. Uh, there is a station over there for kosher and halal meals. If you can't find them, just ask any staff member. At the same time, in about 15 minutes in the code lab space, we're going to start a casual Q&A session about the modules change. You can bring your lunch in there and ask questions in there. Steve and Kevin will be talking about Game of Thrones and everything they just talked about over in the Ask Polymer Lounge. And there's also a Polymer quick start or quick tour area over there where you can preview sort of our new getting started guide and give us feedback and help us really hone that. So we'll be back here at 1.30.
everybody. Um, Matt again, just got a lot shorter this time around. <laughs> Kidding, no. Uh, hi, I'm Elliot. I am a software engineer on the Polymer team. Um, and uh, welcome again to the Polymer Summit 2017 over in Copenhagen. I uh, hope you all had a great lunch. Uh, we have a lot more talks on the way. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, actually, so up next, we have uh, Zilling and Mikhail. They're part of the YouTube team. Um, actually, uh, Mikhail almost didn't get here because of visa issues. So I guess you might say some of our YouTube content wasn't available in this country. <laughs> but uh, So howdy, everybody. Um, so before we uh, go out for break, I have just a few announcements. Um, so in 10 minutes, the uh, code lab is going to start with uh, Valdrin Koshi. He is a really interesting code lab about animations making them performant. Uh, light snacks and coffee are right across. And if there's anybody that you heard earlier today and you have any questions for them, they should be hanging out in the Ask Polymer Lounge. And, uh, we will be back at 4 p.m. with Monica, Rob Dodson, and some more Webpack and stuff like that. It's going to be a lot of fun, guys.
Hello, Palmer Afternoon audience. Is everyone still awake? Yeah. Uh, my name is Brendan. I'm on the, uh, the tools team of Palmer, working on such fabulous tools as the CLI and Bundler and Build and PolyServe and many, many tools. Um, our next guest is a developer advocate. Developers, developers, developers. No. Um, you know him from Polycast and the many, many good uh, videos that he does. Um, I had a special introduction to Rob when I was recovering from surgery. I watched about 9,000 videos of his as I was learning Polymer. <laughs> so he's sort of the, uh, the angel that ushered me into the future of web components. Here he is, Rob Dotson. And I think I have like one more slide to tell you about if we can switch back to the suite. Oh my God, it worked. Oh, never doing a live demo again <laughs> till tomorrow. So because we had that 80-20 problem, I know that this is not going to fit all of your problems and it's not gonna fix every single workflow out there and it's probably gonna enrage you because drag and dropping is kind of annoying. But the best thing about it is because it's open source and because of how I try to build it, you can take it, you can fork it, you can clone it, you can change it and make it work for you. Maybe you need a marketing site assembler where you just build things so that your marketing team can put together, I don't know, pamphlets, whatever marketing does, something awesome that sells shit and gives you money. Um, fork that, fork this tool and build it into that. Maybe you need, you know, a designer where your designers can use four of their UI elements to build things. Please fork it, please build it into that and give it to your team. Uh, maybe you want designers instead of designers instead of designers, uh, because why not would you want that, in particular if your name is Dan Friedman and you get a bigger screen so you can do like nine of them inside of each other, best use of designer ever. Wendy said this morning that her dream was to bring web components to every browser and every developer. And I think the way we're gonna really do this is to start thinking more about visual tools. It's not all about your CLIs and your webpacks and your gulps and your whatever other tools you use. Um, sometimes assembling is really visual and we haven't been really good at building visual tools for visual people. So I hope that this at least proves that there's a value to do this, that it's kind of exciting to build this and to use this. And it takes it a little bit closer because we can now, we're now a little bit closer to just assembling more things and crafting less. Thank you. Awesome job. So, happy end of day one, Polymer. Thanks everyone for coming. Thanks to our live stream uh, attendees for joining us. Um, we've got a full day tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. I got some uh, announcements for our in-person attendees now. Just uh, a <clears throat> bullet list was getting longer and longer. I memorized the points until there were 20 of them. Okay, so uh, we've got a party going on in a little bit, so stick around. Um, we have a fun after party with dinner drinks and a DJ. There are both non-alcoholic drinks and alcoholic drinks. Uh, drink responsibly. Uh, and don't forget the community guidelines uh, that are posted around the venue. Uh, on a similar note, before you get started on the party, have a plan for how you're getting home or wherever. Uh, if you need help figuring out how to get a taxi, you can talk to any of the staff members that are wearing the pink shirts and they'll help you with that stuff. Uh, let's see, coat check, be open until the end of the night. Um, tomorrow morning, we've got breakfast starting at 8 a.m. There's also, uh, starting at uh, 9 a.m., uh, you may attend the Polymer Women's Breakfast, um, and that'll feature a panel discussion with Wendy Ginsberg, Mariko Kosaka, and Monica Dinkolescu. Um, sessions tomorrow start at 10 a.m. sharp. And finally, uh, oh, Anyone that attended the Code Labs, some of you may have noticed that we might be rate limited on the GitHub API with all those Polymer init calls. Um, I think that has to do with our IP locality. <laughs> uh, if you are encountering that issue, you can go to the Polymer elements. So uh, let me just read this verbatim instead of paraphrasing. If you are running into this issue when running Polymer init, you can instead just press the download zip button in the Polymer starter kit repository from the Polymer Elements org. Okay, thank you so much. See you at the party. Bye!